I think most of them, you know, so started career maybe 2000, 2010 or 11 or, you know, uh, before that. Uh, whenever we started a career, you know, during 2010 or 9 or 8 or maybe 12 or 13. So, may I know the market strategy for Arkel Fusion middleware? So, can anybody so describe or, you know, share your ideas, please? So, can anybody please? And you know, can you repeat? Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh, would you mind repeating your question? I didn't get that. Sure. See, now, now you know, so the people are thinking, are talking about so prerequisite of MuleSoft. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, my question okay. is, my question is, what was the same talk about fusion middleware? I mean to say, Arkel Sova Suite or maybe Service Bus or something else, right? What was the point of discussion during 2010 or 2008 or 2008 or maybe 2011? I don't think mules of technology existed by that time. I think this is an emerging. Yeah, so. Actually, there was a lot of buzz about um, Oracle Fusion at that time. So everybody thought it's going to uh, uh, going to be the one of the best player in middleware and integration scope. Mm. But it didn't yeah. happen actually. Yeah, the, uh, that's when I, I'm talking about the requisite. So you asked about Oracle Fusion during 2010, Correct. right? Yeah, 10 or maybe 8 or 11 or something. Uh, yeah. At so everybody months. expected uh, good about that in the, as an integration tool. Mm. So uh, I don't see like it has grabbed much of the market, mm. but it's still used in many of the projects, uh, but not not as like other integration tools. I feel is that correct? Yeah, correct. So my question is related to prerequisites. Uh, okay, what is what the is hundred percent correct? So, but my question is related to prerequisites. Okay, fine. So, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I don't think we are ever of those, you know, back then. So. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you, fine. See, you know, <clears throat> so why I'm telling this, you know, so my career started with SQL and, you know, Java, .NET, some other, uh, so, you know, uh, as a fresher. So at that time, the people was, you know, so talking about, so if you want to learn this, you know, fusion middleware, Java should be required. So everything has built, so based on the Java only. So if you are not able to achieve some logics in, you know, so or some other uh, so, uh, middleware, so we need to write the code in Java or maybe, you know, some other programming language. So then only we can able to integrate blah, 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 blah. Now, really, so what people are, you know, so service based people are using Java. Uh, up to some extent. Ah, very rarely, very rarely, right? So whichever is not possible to build any, I mean to say some condition or maybe some logic. Then we need to write a Java class. Then we need to import in our code. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. See, why I'm telling this, you know, not only MuleSoft, any product, I mean to say, whether it is integration or maybe programming language or maybe some other reporting or whatever it may be. If they want to introduce that product into the market, so they need to implement that product with help of any programming language like Java, right? It doesn't mean that we need to write the code in Java, right? So if you want to write the code in Java, so why should you learn MailSoft or some other middleware or some other new products? Doesn't require, right? 
not only for middlewares for any kind of stuff if something is not possible to achieve definitely everyone should go with any any language i mean to say either of java or maybe you know any scripting languages or some other the same way here also java doesn't require to know okay so that's what my intention right so if you see the java descri uh, job description of mulesoft definitely we may find some of the java stuff like you know spring or core java or spring boot or some other i mean to say microservices or blah 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 if you are from java background yes definitely so mulesoft will add an advantage for you so if you don't know anything about java stack it doesn't mean that so we cannot learn mulesoft hope you got my point right so if you have any you know uh, different opinion or something else so please share with me so that we can discuss right away about that point agree with me all of you yes yeah thank you yep. yeah and also you know so don't feel so these classes like a sessions and some other thing feel like a so discussion so that so we can learn more why because so if i get some questions from you so then only i can explain more thing so that's what my intention so please be open so please be ask all questions whatever you have uh, so whether that is you know major or minor i, I mean to say silly or big one like that okay fine now <coughs> guys uh, so i need to tell you here you know so this i am using i am using free account for these sessions so if you see this right so for each and every 40 minutes it will end and automatically it will reconnect in a 2 seconds okay so please be uh, relogging after completion of 40 minutes i mean to say automatically it will close the session so within a 2 seconds it will up and running again okay so at that time so please be relogging okay so it's my request thank you now current scope of the market so i think mulesoft is leading the market right so in terms of middleware integrations i agree with me or not hello uh, there are a couple of other uh, uh, me components as well right in market like they have uh, del bumi and some people. correct okay so why why mulesoft is uh, leading the market ah that is the next point of discussion yes i agree with you see here not only this so many middlewares are there in the market so for example so oracle middlewares are there ibm middlewares are there del bumi are there tipco are there and you know some other open sources also are there right but why why the people are more interested to discuss or think about mulesoft we have a lot of reasons okay we have a lot of reasons to just clarify that question i will give few things right away okay not required this okay do one thing take this yeah see the very first one is it will support to on prem and cloud right this is the first one the second one it's a open source right the third one it will follow api let connectivity let connectivity architecture what it is 
by using this we can achieve more reusability right more reusability and then and then you know flexible flexible connectivity are there i mean to say i don't want to use those two easy to easy to connect with any kind of end system any kind of end systems okay which means i have a rkl db i have a sql i mean to say sql server i can set i have a amazon amazon database right some other etc i mean to say um, okay uh, let me give some some salesforce then some blockchain or some micro service strategies or or a what not it is everything right if you doesn't like to use the predefined predefined connectors or something else we can build our own also we can build our own stuff i mean to say here connectors components frameworks and etc right and then and then you know it will support for both real time and and bulk process uh, okay so these keywords are not good it i can put it like this oltp and olap transactions okay oltp and olap transactions right so now mm. now 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 yeah so we can we can control we can control memory for our apis or processors etc while while deploying while deploying right we can not we can mailsoft sorry mailsoft can provide provide logging monitoring right and high availability and zero 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 downtime and also it will it will it will add it will add not servers i can mention nodes nodes dynamically what not we can do many things right right if you want name it we can name it many things okay these are all the things are so clear your question hello uh, hi when you say uh, control memory of <coughs> uh processing while deploying right you mean while uh, the process runs or while deploying while deploying see for example uh for example abc application are there abc api are there okay. we know we know that so we may not get more number of hits for that api right at that time i don't want to allocate more memory agree okay right so at that time i can i can allocate very less memory for that api processor so the second api is there so pqr api is there we know many number of hits and many number of you know record the huge load you know so come to that api assume like that at that time 
Yeah. So when you, uh, I just trying to understand the term deploying, right? So yeah. when you're saying deploying, is it a runtime processing or are you saying when you deploy an object or a process? Okay. Into... Okay. okay. So any middleware or any program language, so we need to generate the uh, build file first. So before going to deploy, first we need to complete our build, right? So if you have that build, so we have two or three, three deployment techniques are there. For a time being, we can discuss about manual process. Manually we need to deploy. Okay. So manually means, so first we need to take that zip R jar. Okay, zip R jar. This, this is the deployable archive file for Microsoft. There are build a zip. So just take so that zip file or jar file, then we need to go into the server, then browse that zip file, right? So while we are browsing, so it will ask how much memory you want. Okay. Uh, so 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 just give me a second, please. So the time is less than one minute, are there? So please try to resign, guys, in a few seconds. Okay. Yeah. Now. So come back to our point. So it will ask, so how much memory you want to allocate to this API? So how many nodes you want to allocate this? Right? All these details we need to provide at the time of deploying only. Uh, so once if you select, I mean to say provide